Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing our headlight build with constructing the base of the headlights which I have here. Uh, the base is consisted of these two feet and then there's a 1 8 inch plate that's rolled that has all these rivets in that hold the feet and provide support for the base of the headlights so when it's sitting and vibrating sometimes it won't actually cause any damage. So that's the point of this piece here. There's also holes that mount the support that holds the headlight in place, the actual bulb, so it's nice and strong and it won't like shake as you're going down the track. So that's the piece we're going to focus on today. I'm also going to cover just a little bit of drill press safety and a little bit of uh, roll safety as well. One thing that I've done with these, because I have to make at least five of them, is that when I made the first one, I constructed a template so that when I made subsequent ones, it's easier. So all I do is put this piece on a piece of 1 8 inch steel, and then I have all the centering for my holes and where all the parts go, and then I also have notes on here of what's what. So on this piece, there's two sets, two sizes of rivets, and you can see here, there's larger rivets for the feet, because that's the main support of the headlight, and then there's the smaller set of rivets that run around the whole piece that just act as the bonding between the barrel of the headlight and the base of the headlight itself. So I have on here, I have marked which holes are bigger, I have them drilled to size, and then I use a centering punch to get the center of the holes fairly easily. So that's what we're going to focus on today. I wanted to do a quick zoom in of the plate so everybody can see it before we get started just to get a good idea of what we're dealing with. You can see with this plate, what's interesting is that um, it's side specific. So both sides of, the, of this plate are not the same. So there is a top and there is like a, a front or a back of it. And also the rivet location. So on the back, they ran the rivets here to give it extra strength. And on the front, they have the front row of rivets incorporated into these bigger rivets here. One thing with these rivets is I didn't actually rivet them hot rivet them. They're actually welded on the inside. It's just easier for me to do that now that we have the capability to weld instead of rivet. I'm over here at our shop drill press and I'm not going to get too involved in drill safety today but one thing that I always like to cover with students that I may have using these or teaching people is that you need to know what rotation this drill press is spinning. And the reason being is you always want to put yourself out of the way of the work possibly grabbing and spinning. So our drill press, drill press spins clockwise. So I always want to have the work to my left so that if it grabs, it doesn't come around and smack me in the belly and hurt me. I've seen it happen before, it's no fun. Um, a lot of times these are gear driven and nothing you can do is going to be able to stop them once they grab the piece of metal. So it's always important to be mindful of the direction it's spinning, keep yourself out of danger with these because it can get ugly quick. Hair is another one. If you have long hair, you can easily get your hair tied up in the spinning of the drill press if you're not super careful. So before we go to the next part of fabricating this, which is going to be rolling this to fit roughly the radius of this, we need to make sure that this is completely smooth for the roller. So any spot where there's, I call it, there's like burrs from drilling, any spot where there's burrs from drilling, I have to smooth this whole thing out with a flapper disc to make sure that it's nice and smooth to go into the roll so I don't damage the roller. I'm in front of our big roll that we use for various things here at the museum. Probably the most obvious thing we use this on and the reason why it's so big is that this is the roll we use when we make the boiler jacketing for the locomotives. 
Um, but that doesn't mean it can't roll smaller things. When you roll with this, it's interesting safety thing with this is that you never want to have gloves and I usually take off any kind of loose clothing. The reason being is you don't want anything that can get caught in the roll as you're using it. This roll spins really fast as you'll see. So when I'm rolling, you don't have enough time to react before something's going in and you're getting hurt. These have really hurt people very badly. So it's always, you always have to be super mindful and super careful when you're running these to stay safe as you're fabricating parts. Another good tip when you're using a roll is on the piece of metal that I roll, I tend to write the direction of the roll on the piece of metal so I know which way to feed it. Um, especially if you're doing like a non-uniform curve or a compound roll where it's not all quite the same radius and you're using more sophisticated equipment, uh, knowing kind of where you need to stop and what direction the metal's going in is really important. So I do this just to kind of remind myself, hey, it's supposed to get rolled this way and not this way because then all the work that we did to cut everything out and drill all the holes is gone because it's going to be very difficult to roll it the other way. So I'm about to roll this piece for the base of the headlight. Gloves are going to come off. No gloves. You don't want the glove to get sucked in because it's going to pull your hand in. I've seen that happen to other people. It's not good. No gloves. Shirt's tucked in. I lost my welding jacket because I didn't like the way it was hanging. I don't take any chances with this. When I'm rolling, I like to do, if I have the time, I'm going to do low rolls. So I'm not going to try to roll it all in one go. I'm going to roll it. And sometimes I even flip it, roll it again. And then I slowly work my way into a tighter radius. How am I going to gauge this? That's why I keep an old headlight. I'll show everybody what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the radius of this and I'm gonna put it down and see if it matches an existing headlight's base. Now, what's nice about metal is that your roll does not have to be perfect. So I have special vice grips and different tools that if it, the roll's too big, I can clamp it and make it fit what it needs to fit. I can also, if it's over bent, you can take your foot, step on it and kind of alleviate a little bit of the radius of the roll if you have to. It's not really ideal, but in a pinch, if you do what you gotta do. So I have this base held up against the headlight that is in the process of being built and you can kind of see, I don't, a lot of times with this stuff, I try not to get lost in the details so I'll zoom in quick. You can see that it's for the most part fairly close. This corner over here needs a little pushed in but I'd rather have it loose than tight. Um, it'll be easier for me to pull it tight when I have the barrel made. But this is what this looks like. I don't get lost in measuring like exact radii and all that stuff because you'll it'll just take forever. As long as it's close and you can work it, that's what we're looking for. The last thing I'm gonna leave this video on today is I'm going to paint this and let it dry for the next segment where I roll the barrel and then attach the barrel, this plate, and the feet together with rivets. Now, this is something I feel that's often overlooked when you do a restoration, especially on cars and different things, anytime that you're joining pieces of metal together, you have to make sure that all the pieces are painted prior to installation. So 
this foot is going to go here. But if I just leave this metal above it, on underneath it, unpainted, if water gets in there, it's going to immediately start to rust. Now, it's not going to be perfect. It's very difficult to get it so that it's going to be completely painted and there's no scratches. But if you can do anything you can do to help your cause is good. So a lot of times, like people do like body work on vehicles and they don't paint the inside of it. And then it starts to rust from the inside out. And this will happen to this. If you have this surface unpainted, water gets in, it's going to start to rust. It'll start to push against this surface and it's going to deform and destroy the headlight. Even just moisture in the air can do that as well. And that's why it's really important to do this.